प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर डिक्टेशन ऑफ एक्सरसाइज नंबर ट्वेंटी टू फ्रॉम प्रोग्रेसिव मैगजीन ऑफ अप्रिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो द फाउंडेशन नेशनल इंटेग्रेशन एट द इंडिविजुअल लेवल विल दस बी सिक्योरली लेड इफ एवरी सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया डिस्कवर्स India for himself or herself. If he de- develops a strong patriotic feeling, and if he continually strives to serve his country, but in a nation, groups are even more important than individuals, and it is necessary to lay the foundations. of national integration at the group level as well every individual belongs to one group but to several groups simultaneously for instance he belongs to his family which is a primary group he also belongs to several larger groups at the same time such as his profession his caste or class his place of residence his language or religion his country and ultimately to the entire universe he has also a simultaneous loyalty to all these groups no problem arise when the loyalties of these different groups do not clash with another but very often their interests conflict and then a method of reconciling reconciling them has to be evolved national integration demands two things in this context firstly it expects every citizen to realize that the interests in individual or a group are not served in their exclusive pursuit at the cost of everything else and secondly it also expects every citizen or group to subordinate its interests to those of the nation as a whole it is quite well known that a selfish pursuit of personal or group interests often proves to be counterproductive and socially harmful in the first instance and in the long run it adversely affects those very individual or group purposes which it was expected to serve on the contrary if the larger social objectives are pursued they yield good results not only for the society as a whole but also for all its component individuals or groups for instance a ruthless competitive effort by every individual to secure food or a job for himself may not necessarily help him to get food or employment it will certainly not solve the social problems of hunger malnutrition or unemployment but if all the cities all citizens and groups were to strive for abolition of hunger or unemployment in a concerted action these social problems will easily be solved in order to promote national integration therefore we must educate each citizen to subordinate his personal to the imperatives of national development 
in all its parameters. It is unfortunate that there are several antisocial forces which prevent the development of national integration. It is the responsibility of all of us to see that they are overcome. One such important force is regionalism. While one understands a certain loyalty to the religion and a certain healthy interest in its development, such loyalties and interests are often overdone and attempts are made to spread feelings of hostility against people of other regions or against the nation itself. One particularly deplores the rise of several senas in different parts of the country which often carry on virulent and violent campaigns against the people migrating from other regions. One can sympathize with the demand that the legitimate claims of the local people in regard to local employment should be given due consideration. But agitations in the name of the sons of the soil can hardly solve the problem of unemployment. It can be solved only when there is rapid economic growth, not only in the region, but in all parts of the country. What is even more important, such demands cannot be carried to an extreme position which negates the very right of every Indian citizen to seek employment and to settle down in any part of India and no one can support the campaigns of hate and violence which are often let loose in the wake of even legitimate demands. Another important disruptive force is linguism. One sympathizes with the demand that the claims of every Indian language should be duly recognized in all development plans. This, in fact, is the existing policy of government and several measures are being taken to see that all Indian languages, each of which is a national language, receive due encouragement and support. Special steps are also being devised to develop the tribal languages and the government of India has set up in Mysore a central institute of Indian languages to supplement the work that is being done in this field by universities and other agencies. It is, however, necessary to recognize that in linguistically plural society like ours, individual language groups have to adjust themselves to certain national imperatives. We must cultivate English and in addition, we must study other international languages also on an increasing scale. We must recognize that we do need a link language at the national level 
and that this can only be Hindi. The national leadership has made it clear that the development of Hindi will not be allowed to affect the development of other Indian languages. Stop.